Hey everybody, Doug here. So Blackmagic kind of surprised us this morning with announcements of some new products, some new video hubs. Uh, we didn't know that was coming. Yeah, I want to take you through what what's different, what's new with these things, uh, how they compare to the older versions in a lot of different ways. So yeah, this is a uh, pretty cool that these are doing that they're doing this, and I think it's probably another indicator that they're just get, they're getting a little bit closer to having 4K or Ultra HD, 12G SDI video switchers coming out um, to replace some of the older models here real soon. So the new products are called Smart Video Hub and if you're not familiar with that product line let me kind of briefly describe what, what it's about. These are actually really cool things to have. They're routing switchers and so what these allow you to do is to reroute your signals, video signals, uh, SDI video signals, from any, any source to any destination. So say for example you've got uh, five cameras hooked up, you've got three video recorders hooked up, you've got five computers hooked up as, as video sources, and then you've got destinations going to your video switcher, your streaming encoder, uh, recorders, uh, any, any number of different things, like capture device for a computer. So what this allows you to do is to take any one of those various sources and send that to any of your destinations, and it can be more than one destination. So if you wanted to take, for example, the program output of your switcher, you connect that to one of the inputs on the Smart Video Hub, and then within the Smart Video Hub, you're able to take that signal and send it to as many places as you want. So you can send it to your recorders, you can send it to several different monitors, you can send it to a monitor that's uh, way out, out in a cry room or whatever. So it allows you to reroute signals without having to move any cables around. And not just reroute them, but also duplicate them. So if you wanted to have your program output from your switcher go to 40 different destinations, you can do that. So it's ultimately very, very cool to be able to do that without having to change any cabling whatsoever. So you make your connections one time and you're able to change that at, at any time, change the way the signals are routed at any time through the Video Hub user interface. They actually announced three different new models, the 10x10, the 20x20, and the 40x40. So more about that in a minute. But, but all of these support 12 gig SDI, so that means you can do Ultra HD at up to 60 frames per second in these units, as long as you're doing uh, shooting in 10-bit uh, 422. I'm going to kind of skip the press, press release. You can read that for yourself if you want. But uh, let's kind of go through some of the information they have here on the website. Just read their description. The new Blackmagic Video Hub 12G SDI video routers let you connect all your equipment without creating a complex cable mess. Blackmagic Video Hub routers support 12G SDI, so they can allow you to connect and route any combination of SD, HD, and Ultra HD to the same router on the, on the same router at the same time. Plus, they have zero latency, so they are perfect for live production and broadcast. Let me just add one little thing in here. Zero latency, that's always been a feature, that's not new. They're really touting that with this, these announcements, but that, that's something all of them have always had, except the clean switch. The design features an elegant front panel with LCD for labels and even live video, shortcut buttons and a machine metal spin knob with soft rubber coating that lets you browse video sources. Ethernet is also included, so you can remotely control the router using a range of external hardware or software control panels. All right, so, oh. A lot, of, uh, a lot of words there to basically say you can route any input to any output, and any of those can be, any of your sources can be any video standard from SD all the way up through Ultra HD, and it's able to handle that just fine. It doesn't do any sort of conversion of the signals uh, at all. It just takes whatever signal is coming in on an input and sends it to an output exactly as it arrives on the input. So no, no that sort of conversions, no changing of the signal whatsoever. So here's a look at the front panel, then we'll take a look at the back panel, you can see the 10 by 10, 10 inputs, 10 outputs, 20, 20 inputs, 20 outputs, and so forth. Uh, you, can, the, you can see that the 40 by 40 model also has two power inputs on it, so that, that's redundant power supplies. So that's just in case of failure, so if one of the power supplies in the unit actually dies, if you have the other one connected up, it will still keep running. And aside from that, they are basically identical aside from the numbers of inputs and outputs. Another, another thing I wanted to make note of here, it, with their previous models, and we'll start to talk, discuss some of the differences between the previous and the current models, all of these new ones have the same number of buttons on the faces. So previously, uh, the old models had in, uh, numbered buttons on there, which corresponded to this, the number of inputs and outputs they had. So the, the 12 by 12, they... 12x12 12 12 had 12 buttons, the 20x20 20 20 had 20, and the 40x40 40 40 had 40, and they were just numbered, so you'd, uh, you'd be able to route input 1 to output 5 or whatever like that and do it by number. And they've taken a, a very different approach with this one, so that's kind of one of the first differences that I wanted to talk about. Uh, these devices, you can see they have these first 10 buttons are labeled. They actually have words on them. So 
what they're doing here is a little bit different than they've done with their products in the past. The way you actually do the video routes is quite different on this one versus the old one. The old ones, everything was done by input number, or you could scroll through and uh, scroll by name. But for the most part, we use them strictly by number. So you kind of have to remember in the back of your head, oh yeah, computer three, that's on input 24 or whatever. With this new one, they're trying to simplify that quite a bit by using labels on your inputs and outputs. So as you're installing the device and setting it up, they strongly encourage you to have the names of your devices start with one of these shortcuts that's on these buttons here on the front. So we've got Mon, DEC, Edit, ATEM, MView for Multiview, Stream, Cam, SC, STC, PC, and Mac. And they, they really want you to use those names on your inputs and outputs. And, what, and the reason they do that is so that it makes it easier to find your, your inputs and outputs as you're making routes. So very briefly, if you want to route camera three to input five of your switcher, the way you do that, you first of all, select, you press the out button on your switcher. Say so you're gonna to to change the, output, the routing for an output. So you press out first, and then you would press ATEM for your switcher, and then you would press five. So you're saying, I want to route to input five of my switcher, and then from there, you press the in button and you say uh, cam, and then you would press three. So that you tell that you want to output, I want to have the video source come from camera three. And it doesn't matter which physical input those are, input or output those are plugged into, because you've set up the device when you configured it with the names corresponding to what those sources and destinations are. It's able to filter that and allow you to get to those things a lot faster. In theory, it should be a much easier way to do your routing on your devices because you're not having to remember, oh yeah, uh, camera five, that's on input 16 or whatever. So you just say camera five and it knows exactly which input that is by name and you're using these buttons to filter the list. So essentially what's happening is when you press the ATEM button, it reduces the number of inputs or outputs that it has to cycle through based on, ones, uh, based on those that actually have the name ATEM, or a name that starts with ATEM, and then the number that comes after that. You can, so by pressing those buttons, you're essentially filtering from the list of all the inputs or outputs that are on, on the device down to hopefully just the one that you want. So it's a very different workflow than what their old video hubs had, but it should be easier, especially for people who are just getting started with them, to be able to find their, their sources and destinations. So uh, I'm, I still have mixed feelings about that because I have such a wide variety of different types of devices here in my trailer that I don't know that these this number of uh, labels actually is going to uh, give me everything that I need in order to make all this work. So we'll see. Well, I, it's, it's, it's yet to be, to be determined. We'll, we'll figure that out a little bit later. So, so that's kind of the new workflow with these new devices. So you filter by the different type of device that you're trying to do routing for, whether that be an input or an output. All right, okay, so the next thing I wanna mention, and this is kind of obvious from the name, but these devices support 12 gig SDI, whereas most of the previous ones only supported six, six gig SDI, so those are limited to Ultra HD at up to 30 frames per second, whereas the new ones will do Ultra HD at up to 60 frames per second. Again, assuming you're working in 10-bit 422, uh, YUV 222 actually, 422. Uh, so you're getting additional connectivity for future devices. So if you ever want to do uh, 4K at 60 frames per second, these devices will be ready for that. Uh, whereas the previous ones, you had to get a much more expensive Smart Video Hub 12G version, and only available in 40 by 40 in order to route signals of that resolution and frame rate. I should mention that one of the things that Blackmagic does with these that you don't really see with much, many other manufacturers that do video routers is the LCD screen. And that makes it easier to navigate and see exactly what you're doing, but it also gives you an option to preview your video. So you can see exactly which video source you're routing uh, before, you, before you take it live. So that's an advantage that the Smart Video Hub products have had for at least the, for the last two generations the current and the previous, and I found that tremendously useful. And historically, the old ones, the screens were actually pretty good. So um, like the 40 by 40s that I have here in my trailer, that screen actually is full 1920 by 1080, even though it's small. So you can really see exactly what your video source looks like. 
uh, in, in full resolution. So I would suspect that they're doing the same thing on this, though I won't know that for sure until I get my hands on one. It's not listed in the technical specifications for the device. So um, another feature that's available on the new ones that was not available on the old ones is something that's called macro routing. So let me actually pull up the manual and show you Okay, I had to scroll all the way down to page 48 to get to this, but this is the, here's a section on creating macros. And this is something that is new in, in these new models that was not available on the previous smart video hubs. Uh, you could do some of this through their, their external controllers, the master control panel and the smart control panel, but it was not available on the smart video hubs themselves. So what this allows you to do is basically determine, like, I want to make these 16 routing up to these 16 routing changes all at the same time so you know like i want to route cameras one through five to inputs one through five on my switcher and do it with a single button press that's what macros are for so each one of these macros allows you to do up to 16 different sources so and basically what you want to do is uh let's see when you're setting this up you kind of have to determine how many of the buttons you want to have be shortcuts for different labels, label prefixes, so like DEC, CAM, ATEM, whatever, and you can reduce that number and swap some of those buttons out to have them be used for macros. So there's a little slider in here which kind of let you, lets you adjust what that split is, so you have up to 10 buttons that you can use. You have to decide for yourself how many of those you want to be shortcuts and how many of those you want to be macros, but you're able to do that. And like once you've selected uh, at least one of those buttons to be a macro button, you can click on that button and then choose up to 16 different sources that you want to, to route to, to 16 different destinations. So that's, that's what you do here. So this first, from this example, they've only selected CAM 1 to, going to DEC 1, but you can then have CAM, CAM 2 going to DEC 2, uh, Computer 1 going to ATEM 1, whatever. So you're able to do up to 16 and store that in a single button. So what happens with that point, with that point is anytime you press that button, it prepares those up to 16 routes to go live. Uh, and then all you have to do is press the take button and then adjust all of them simultaneously. So in my, in my situation, I would have one that's like, this is my YouTube video configuration. Then I have one for this is uh, for when you're doing Zoom call, uh, virtual events. And here's one for when you're doing sporting events, those kinds of things. So I could actually have buttons on there on this on this smart video hub panel with one button press reconfigure up to 16 of those routes in order to send the right video sources to the right destinations. So that is something that's new. It has not been available in the video hubs previously. So yeah, that's kind of about it for, for differences. So yeah, big, big things are going from 60 gig SDI up to 12 gig SDI, the ability to do macros, simple macros, the ability to filter inputs and outputs by name to make routing a little bit easier. That's new. Uh, the other thing is I noticed that the power consumption on these is significantly lower than the old ones too. So, for example, the the, the 40 by 40, the old 12 gig version consumed, it was, I can't remember the exact number, but it was upwards of 100 watts. And the new one does, it consumes 45. So, basically half the power consumption, which is always great. And which also means less heat as well. So you can put these in an equipment rack without having to worry about them heating up as much. And probably that also means that less fan noise as well. What are my thoughts on this? So am I going to get one? Well, maybe, but only because I'm building out my basement uh, st recording studio and YouTube studio. And I'm going to need some sort of smart video hub in there. If I didn't have that project going on, no, I wouldn't be buying one because the smart video hubs that I have in my tra here in my trailer already do what I need to do. So I, there's no compelling reason for me to upgrade those. Not really much by the way of additional functionality, especially considering that a lot of this label functionality is available in their master control uh, product as well, master control pro product as well. So no, I probably won't be getting one, at least not for purchase, at least not right away. Ex with the exception of I, I will probably be getting one for my recording studio when the time comes for that. So I may take the opportunity to upgrade one in the trailer to one of the new ones and then move my 40 by 40 from the trailer to my studio. We'll see. I haven't decided just yet. Um, there are some ways that these are kind of a bit of a disappointment. So first of all, they only have 12 gig SDI versions. There are no HD only versions, which means that someone who is only doing HD is paying a lot of money for functionality that they don't necessarily need. So that means the prices for those for that particular audience is higher than it needs to be. So it's kind of disappointing they don't have HD versions only, but they also haven't had that for a long time either. So it's not like we're losing some functionality there that we didn't have before. Uh, the other thing that I think I wish that they would include is the ability to 
pre basically define presets on the fly. So I'll tell you what I'll tell you what happens to me all the time. And that would make that a super useful thing to have. So very often before events, I will come and spend some time in my trailer pre-configuring things, setting video routes, uh, configuring devices. Uh, however, I need them for the event so that I, when I show up on site, I'm not having to do it there and then. That uh, gives me the ability to test things ahead of time as well. So reducing the number of surprises I have on event day, which is great. But at the same time, I always find that I have to make changes once we get there. It's like client says, oh, I need a monitor for my client, for, for this person to watch from over here, which means I've got to reroute um, the video on site at the last minute, which is fine. It's a part of the job. But what that means is that if I, if it's a recurring job and I need to set that up again, I have to go through all those same steps yet again, every single time. Uh, it would be very, very nice if these smart video hubs had the ability to save all of your routes internally into a preset that you can later recall. So you get this, this is my basketball preset. This is my zoom meeting preset or whatever. They don't do that. So, uh, there are ways of doing that. There is a module within Companion, but Focus Companion, that will save all of your routes and let, let your, let your reader later recall them. But there's not a feature built into either the, the Blackmagic Smart Video Hub itself or even their software. Their software doesn't let you save routes either. So that's, some, that's a bit of a shortcoming. That's something that would be very easy to add. Um, it takes a minimal amount of storage in order to save those routes, like literally bytes of memory. Uh, so it'd be nice for them to put that in there at some point, but but it's not a deal breaker. You, you can you can use the macro feature to to, to predefine some things, uh, but then the limited number of buttons means that the macro feature is only going to be so useful because every for, for every macro you add, you're having to remove one of your labels, uh, one of your ten available labels uh, for filtering your devices. So. Compared to products from other other companies, it's it's there. These things are bargains. That you know, you're not getting this kind of functionality, especially at the 12 gig SDI level, level from anybody else. Uh, AJA is the, the closest, but they're quite a bit more expensive for less functionality. They don't have screens and whatnot. So, anyway, um, if these products are something that are interesting to you, um, I'm going to have links to those popping up here on your screen, so you can get more information. And once those are available for ordering, you know those links will also be able to take you to different uh, vendors that sell these things and so yeah you'll be able to be able to make purchases and support the channel at the same time so if you have any questions that i can answer you can leave those in the comment section down below or even better join us over on my discord server and where we have a community of people who are video producers many of which know more than i do and are happy to answer questions and so please join us over there if you want to know more about any of this video related stuff so that's going to do it. So thanks, everybody, for watching, and have a fantastic day.